Hello. Yeah. It's just that thing. Now. But then you have to do it like a scroll. Mm -hmm. If I make it full screen, mm -hmm. then you can change slide by okay, slide. How do you want? Yeah, for sure. Ah. Mm -hmm. So for that, you have to okay. you know, press it and click. Mm -hmm. so it's something not working. No, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Then no, no remote? No, this is right now not like okay. mm -hmm. so, okay, yeah. Yeah, sure, fine. Can you move from to the page? Okay, so let me welcome you all to today's talk by Professor Arun Kumar Patil. Um, she is a very distinguished uh, um, quantum information scientist. I mean, if you Google words in famous quantum information scientist, the first name of the face is his, followed by uh, Fesco, Zeilinger, uh, Pan. Uh, Eckert and so on. So he is currently the head of uh, the Center for Quantum Science and Technology at IIIT Hyderabad. And before that, he was uh, at uh, HRI, where he founded the Quantum Information Group. And uh, he is uh, uh, very well known for, for a lot of, I'd say, uh, you know, important contributions to the field of quantum information, uh, particularly the low division theory, uh, which, along with the low closing theory, is one of the cornerstones of quantum information. And in addition, he's also proved uh, two other celebrated theorems uh, no hiding and no masking, which have all been experimentally verified. I think it's been probably touch upon those topics today. And, uh, and so he has made uh, a very important contributions also to the growth of uh, quantum information in India, uh, both through his research and uh, teaching and uh, 
and participate in the many important conferences and so on. So, so these few words I'd like to give to Professor Cotton. Yeah. yeah, hello. Yeah. So thank you, Professor Das, for uh, uh, inviting me and uh, organizing this uh, colloquium. Uh, so before I decided this topic, I thought uh, a few things and few topics. Uh, should I talk about current thing that I'm doing or should I talk about uh, what I've done before? So I thought this may be more interesting to a wider audience. So, you know, that's how this title is. Uh, so at the end of this uh, talk, possibly you will get an answer to this question that I'm raising here. Okay. So, yeah, so all of you are familiar, you know, uh, with classical information. Uh, so here I try to motivate how distinct is classical information or so to say how distinct is quantum information from classical information, okay? So in classical world, we know that you can choose any two distinct states. Uh, by the way, do we point or something? No, this, okay. So in classical, uh, information processing, we know that we can choose two distinct states like zero or one, and they can represent two logical states of a classical bit. And then you can do various tasks according to classical laws of physics. So you never find these logical state zero, one in a combination of zero and one, that never happens. But if you go to quantum world, you know that quantum object can remain in distinct physical states as well as in combination of those two distinct states. And that is essentially coming due to linear superposition principle that we all know, and that allows you, you know, a new way of storing information in quantum states. And quantum science in a larger sense, is trying to exploit these basic principles of quantum mechanics for various information processing tasks, which are otherwise impossible. That is the bigger goal, you know, all of you are trying to uh, do, okay? So if you look at quantum theory, the whole structure of quantum theory based on two basic tenets. One is unitarity, sorry, unitarity, and other is linearity. So quantum mechanical predictions has been tested to so much accuracy that you never find any deviation, even slightest deviation from linearity and unitarity, okay? So the most of the thing that I've talked today, essentially fundamental consequences of these two tenets of quantum mechanics. Uh, so coming to notion of quantum bit, all of you know, but just for you know sake of completeness, so we know that if you choose a quantum state like spin of particle, if you say this is zero and this is down as one, I know that this is a two distinct states of a spin of particle. But then by leader's proposition principle, I can also have a physical logical state like this alpha zero plus beta one. And that is essentially an orbited quantum state, and that represents a quantum bit, all of you know. And in classical world, classical bit can remain either zero or one, but quantum bit can remain both in zero and one. And this inherent parallelism is essentially uh, the notion that was realized by David Doyce way back in 1985, and that leads to the new type of computation that we are all trying to work on, so-called quantum computing. Okay, so, <clears throat> Before coming to some of the main results that I will try to highlight, we have to understand what is the notion of an unknown quantum bit. So when you think of quantum bit that I just wrote before, alpha zero plus beta one, uh, you have two complex numbers, alpha and beta. And if the complex numbers are not known to us, then the quantum bit or qubit is in, a, in an unknown quantum state, okay? And given an unknown quantum state, it is impossible to, determine the state, okay? So this is the key notion one had to appreciate, unlike the classical world, uh, even with a single uh, copy of a quantum, sorry, classical system, you can determine the precise uh, description of the quantum, sorry, classical particle like position and momentum. But in quantum mechanics, even a single entity, you can never be able to determine the quantum state, okay? Uh, you need infinite number of collections of identical prepared quantum states to determine the state. You can do tomography, you can do other methods also to find the state. So if you ask the question, how many bits do you need to specify a qubit? Ideally, you need infinite number of bits because you need to specify two real numbers in bits. But if you do a measurement on a quantum state like this, you will never be able to assess all the information. You will get either zero or one. That 
least essential extraction of just one classical bit. So even though your qubit has large number of vast amount of information, but by doing measurement, you can extract only one bit. Okay. So this large amount of information can never be extract, can never extract by measurement, and most of the information is actually inaccessible for an external observer. And this is an important consequence as you will see. Uh, there is another notion, all of, again, all of us know, that is the notion of quantum entanglement that is also quite old, uh, you know, studying it himself, I realized in 1935. And at that time, he could uh, actually, you know, realize that this is something which, you know, uh, completely, you know, uh, departs from the classical line of thoughts. Okay, so that really profound insight here at the time. So. So in quantum information, what are you trying to do? We're trying to do various things, you know, one is quantum computing, one is quantum communication, quantum cryptography, and many, new, many more things. So in the quantum computing, we have various algorithms. We have to study computational complexity, we have to study decoherence, error correction, we have to study experimental implementation, and so on. In quantum communication, we have famous teleportation protocol, we have dense coding, we have remote teleportation, we have remote control, and many more things. I just try to highlight a few things. And here we have BB84 scheme, we have entangled based scheme, we have secret sharing, we have also few more protocols. Okay. So in all of these, uh, what actually matters is quantum coherence, quantum entanglement, quantum correlation, and non-locality. These features are being utilized to do something different, something remarkable, something uh, you know, um, uh, something which is not possible in the classical world. That is the larger goal. Okay. Uh, So if you ask the question, what is quantum information? We know that over the last three decades, this quantum information theory has developed into a vigorous field of research. So much development, so much you know, uh, discoveries have been made. But uh, asking this question actually leads to new insight, new applications, and new implications. So this is a quote from Richard Jusa, the same person who discovered the Jusa algorithm. So he says, indeed, the very idea of Viewing quantum states as carriers of some kind of information, albeit unable in classical terms, leads to leads naturally to interesting questions that might otherwise never have been asked and corresponding in new insights. So this is important to know or to you know appreciate uh, this uh, question that if you start asking the question how different this quantum Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, so when you have a quantum state like psi, it carries both classical and quantum information. As I said, a quantum state like psi contains potentially vast amount of information which is inaccessible to an external observer. And this inaccessible information is possibly the quantum information. We will actually try to answer this question more uh, in a more formal way later on. But essentially, this is the intuition that leads to the notion of quantum information. And the amount of information that you can extract from a quantum state by measurement is essentially the classical information. And quantum information differs from classical information fundamentally in many ways. And it is important to know the differences between this classical and quantum information. Uh, and more so by studying these fundamental differences between classical and quantum information, that will tell us what is really quantum about this quantum information. Okay, so that is the bigger goal. Uh, so again, uh, just to motivate, uh, to study these differences, we will have fundamental very particular importance is fundamental because as I said, they will shed light on the, on the boundaries between classical and quantum information. And the practical because you can exploit these differences for various security purposes in quantum computer, quantum communication channels, and many more things. For example, 
the famous snow cloning theorem that was discovered in 1982 is the key uh, feature or key uh, principle which behind which is uh, you know which provides security uh, in the quantum protocol protocol you know that is the biggest uh, application so so what are the differences that you see when you go to uh, you know quantum information so i will try to uh, uh highlight some of the differences which are captured under this no go theorem because these are the things that you cannot do uh, with your quantum devices okay these are the kind of you know uh, uh, limitations that is imposed by the rules of quantum mechanics when i say rules essentially the rules of uh, quantum field essentially the some limit to inequality Uh, sorry, actually, I'm not able to hear you uh, clearly. The audibility Hello. is not there. Hello, can you hear now? Yes, yes, yes. This is fine. Okay. So these are the differences that I will try to highlight. <coughs> One is no cloning theorem, and the other is no deleting theorem. Then third thing is about how it is impossible to design a not gate for quantum uh, qubit or qubit, you know, or quantum information, and i will also tell about how it is not possible to partially erase quantum information you can erase completely but you can never be able to erase partially and then i will also talk about talk about no heading theorem and finally i will talk about no masking theorem okay so this is the uh, first uh, no go theorem that was uh, discovered by uters and jurek in 1982 all of you know uh, that is essentially the no cloning theorem so what one aims to do here is you want to build a machine okay which is similar to your xerox machine but actually you are familiar and you would like to send some information here and a blank state here at the output you would like to have the original along with a copy okay this is exactly what you do in your xerox machine your machine you, you feed your uh, information that you want to make a copy you feed some blank paper And then you press a button and you get two, you know, original language the copy. Okay, same thing you want to do for a quantum state. Is it possible? The answer is no. And why it is no? Let's see that. So classical, we know that you can make a copy of this input like zero. And this is input. This is your blank state. Here, this is input. This is blank state. And it is possible to make this transformation like zero zero can go to zero zero, and one zero can go to one one. Uh, so what it tells you that if you, uh. Think of your quantum state or qubit state, you know, tonal state. They can be cloned perfectly. Why? Because if the state is zero or one, essentially they encode your classical information zero or one. Okay. So quantum states in orthogonal, and uh, I mean, quantum systems in orthogonal states are actually carrying classical information. So you, that means you can actually make copy of this zero, zero going to zero zero, and one zero can go to one one. This is possible. And also, it is possible that if you know a quantum state, you can clone perfectly. But the no cloning theorem tells that if you are given an arbitrary state like psi, and you don't know what is alpha and beta, then there is no machine which can take the psi and blank state, and you can also include the state of the device, which you call A or apparatus. And this input state can never be transformed to something like psi and psi in some final state of the apparatus. Okay. And why this is not possible? The proof is just two lines. Just to allow the linear mapping of this zero zero going to zero zero one zero going to one one, and apply here, and then you will see that you are not able to do that. Okay, you fail in making a copy of this this input. Okay, so this is essentially the cloning theorem. Uh, four years later, in 1986. Uh, Uh, even try to prove this no cloning for uh, two non orthogonal states okay and he did not use linearity he just used unitarity and the uh, statement looks like this so there doesn't exist a unitary transformation that can turn to non orthogonal state like psi 1 0 go to psi 1 psi 1 and psi 2 0 can go to psi 2 psi 2 so how how the proof looks like proof is again very simple just one line proof You assume that it is possible and get a contradiction. Okay, so what you do? You say, okay, let's say that you are able to do this, and you, you know that any unitary 
evolution or transfer cycle which of the inner product so you take the inner product this side to this that is psi1 psi2 and this side is psi1 times psi2 and psi1 times psi2 so if you take modulus essentially this is equal to the square that is essentially contradiction that is non orthogonal state if the value of psi1 psi2 lies between 0 and 1 and this can never be happen never be satisfied unless they are orthogonal okay so this also tells that uh orthogonal state can be copied but two non orthogonal state can never be able to copy okay so this also has the implication in quantum computer so quantum communication and in many more quantum communication protocols uh later on uh, in 2004 uh, richard josa tried to prove a stronger version of moglodin theorem so what he thought is the following so he asked the following question so when you deal with classical information you are able to make the copy perfectly okay you don't need any any extra information hello well okay. thank you so so what he thought is the following that classically you know whenever i want to make a copy i don't need any extra information whatever is given to me i can make a copy okay so is it true that we lack some information when we try to make copy of a quantum state okay so that question he tried to ask and essentially uh this is the uh, question he raised that what extra information do we need to supplement to one copy to produce two copies okay classically we don't need as i said don't need anything extra but what he proved is surprisingly in quantum case to produce an extra copy you must supply the full information no less no more you have to recreate the information from scratch that means your machine is not doing anything you have to recreate you know uh, prepare yourself from the beginning you know so the, again the proof is simple so uh, so i thought i will include it uh, but if you If it's uh, too mathematical, I should I can skip. Uh, should I go through the proof of this? So this the statement looks like this. So any physical operation like psi i and some in some some blank state can go to psi i psi i. That can exist if and only if there is a physical operation taking this a i to psi i. That means the full information about psi i must be supplemented to this a i. Okay. That means. the clone must already be provided in the selected ai itself okay that means uh, pictorially you can say that this is possible if and only if this can be transformed to this okay so the theorem is again uh, simple uh, uh so any physical operation in quantum information we essentially represent some kind of truss which are being completely positive map but essentially i mean uh, don't worry about this the statement this is a bit rigorous but essentially what it means is that any physical operation that you want to do on a quantum system whether it is closed or open you can always enlarge your system and you can always imagine that they are evolving on a unitary transformation okay so everything is unitary on a bigger helper space so if you consider this one part of the statement that is if the physical operation taking ai to psi i then obviously you can satisfy this very very trivial so converse statement is also not difficult actually just two line proof so i thought i will include here so conversely you assume that you have a map something like this okay by including as i said by additional quantum system this physical operation forget about this cp map everything but any physical transformation can be realized by unitary evolution in a larger helper space and by unitarity we know that if this is satisfied then i should have for two distinct i and j i should have ai aj so psi a psi j but also i know from linear algebra that any two sets of equal matrices of inner product for all i and j that happens if and only if these two sets are unitarily equivalent that means i can always get psi i from ai alone by some unitary transformation which would take this to this okay so the first part of the statement is very trivial second part essentially assume i may request this f that unitary evolution preserve this and that means i can always recreate the psi i from ai okay so that is the theorem says that to create a quantum state you don't i mean uh, the full information must be supplied 
on the blank state itself. Okay, that means you recreate the shy. Your copy machine is not doing anything, not helping at all to make a copy. Okay, fine. So now I'll come to non deletion part. Uh, but, but before that, let me tell you about the notion of erasure of classical and quantum bit. Uh, in classical world, if you want to erase a bit, that is essentially an irreversible operation. That means if I am given a bit like zero, I want to change to zero. If I've given one, I want to change it to zero. And that needs energy expenditure. This was realized by Landovers. And uh, that's why uh, uh, this is so famous you know, in classical computing. And that tells you that the Landovers erasure principle tells that erasing a single bit generates entropy KL of two. And that is a lot a lot of application in reversible computation, resolution of Maxwell's demon, and, and also trying to visualize, uh, you know, trying to connect information theory and physics, essentially you know, from the view, from the fact that information is ultimately physical, okay? If you want to do same thing for, for a quantum bit, you can also do, but again, that is irreversible. That means you cannot do this side to zero transformation by reversible operation. And again, you want to erase a single qubit, you to spend that much amount of energy. And why you cannot do by reversible operation? The proof is again very simple. Uh, so we know that in quantum mechanics, any reversible operation is represented by unitary transformation because if you are given some state, you want to apply some U, I can go to some other state. I can always apply U inverse and get back to the original state. So that is how you do the reversible operation. And as I said, process of erasure of qubit transforms any arbitrary input side to a fixed state, okay? That is the job of erasing a quantum bit. Now take two non-orthogonal states like psi and phi, okay? You take psi and phi, that means the same erasure operation, you know, should take psi to zero, zero. If you are able to do by reversible operation, that means if you are able to do this by some unitary transformation, then I take this side, multiply, and I multiply this side. So that means, Unitary evolution, we know that they must preserve the inner product. That means psi phi should be equal to zero, zero, which is essentially one. But essentially, that is a contradiction. You can never be able to do this. Okay. Even more uh, importantly, when you take two non orthogonal, sorry, two orthogonal state, like suppose assume that psi and phi are orthogonal, that means I have this side zero and this side one. Again, a contradiction. Okay. So that is essentially the reason why you cannot erase classical information nor quantum information by reversible operation, okay? This is, this shows in a very simplest and a profound way that neither classical information nor quantum information can be reached by reversible operation. My hand is a little wet, so that is why not working. Is working till now, what happened suddenly? Can you do like this? This one, no. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, so let me uh, come to no deletion theorem. Uh, essentially, what you want to do here is you want to design a machine uh, where we would like to have two input, and this machine should keep one qubit and uh, delete one copy. Okay, so if you can transform psi, psi to psi sigma, then we will say yes, we are able to design. So classically, I know that I can delete two identical bits, like zero, zero can go to zero, zero, and one, one can go to one, zero, okay? Now, if you ask the same question for quantum, uh, I mean, quantum state, like two qubit, like psi and psi, can I do this uh, transformation, which will take psi, psi to psi sigma? And again, by using linearity, you can show that it is impossible to 
delete one copy from this other copy and that is essentially you don't delete it here so more precisely the statement looks like this so there is no quantum mechanical transformation which can take this input copy psi psi along with the state of the machine and transform to psi sigma and some final state of the machine so where this is your drum state this is your initial state of the machine and this is final state of the ancilla ancilla is essentially the state of the machine which you are including in this description and uh, the proof i'm not giving here but essential idea is the following that you don't want that your quantum state should contain should be contained in the final state of the ancilla if it is so then did not actually deletion okay because that thread can contain the psi and you can retrieve from there okay and also uh, in our proof we exclude swapping as a proper deletion because you don't want the quantum information should be hidden anywhere in the deleting machine or any other part of the universe if you allow swapping and tracing then the result will reduce to erasure and the extra copy will play no role in deleting mechanism so under this uh, physically physical requirement we tried we prove that Uh, there is no machine which can do this job. Okay. You can hang or. Is it working? But now not working. I don't know why. <laughs> okay so hmm hmm yeah so yeah remote may be better no remote may be much easier uh, so uh so 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 what i'm going to tell now is uh, Uh, the non elution theorem along with the stronger no cloning theorem that leads to some kind of uh, notion of permanence of quantum information which is not there in classical information okay so so no elution theorem also you can prove for two non orthogonal states that you can show that there is no physical operation which will take this iai psi iai and the state of the machine to this psi iai zero and a zero your blank state uh this was actually later proved by richard jo sign 2004 Uh, that means it is impossible to eliminate quantum information and whatever also what is told is that only option is to move the information to ancilla part where it will continue to exist and second of it can always be resurrected from the final state of the ancilla so no relation theorem and stronger no cloning theorem uh, they have a common feature and that is that is the following that in cloning we realize that first copy provides no assistance in making the second copy and in deleting mechanism also the first copy provides no assistance so if you consider these two theorems together they imply that quantum information has a quality of permanence and what is that that it is essentially to create a copy we have to import information some from some part of the world where it already existed and to destroy or to delete we have to export quantum information to some part of the world where it must continue to exist so essentially you can never be able to create nor able to eliminate quantum information and later on uh, horodeki group and uh, aditi sen ujjwal sen they also tried to connect this to conservation of information uh, uh, using thermodynamic context and using entanglement transformation they showed that basic law of quantum information we tells that in closed system one can Uh, one cannot change the entanglement by local operation this is a very basic feature of entanglement theory and using uh, using this principle they try to so that no deleting and no cloning actually connected to conservation of quantum information and they also try to show that there exists connection between no deleting no cloning and even second law of thermodynamics so but i'm not going to detail about uh, these okay so Yeah, sorry <laughs> okay so there is another uh, thing that is not allowed in quantum uh, information that is to do with universal not gate 
what it means it means the following i know that if i have given classical bit like 0 or 1 i can design and not get 0 can go to 1 1 can go to 0 essentially you flip this okay uh <clears throat> if you are given a quantum bit in orthogonal state like 0 or 1 you can also do same thing like if you are given 0 and 1 uh, if you spin a particle, I can always apply the sigma x, the you know Pauli matrix rotation. <clears throat> so I can change zero to one and one to zero. But what about a qubit in arbitrary state? Can I flip psi to psi orthogonal? And this what is psi orthogonal? Psi orthogonal is essentially alpha star one minus beta star zero. If your psi is alpha zero plus beta one, your psi orthogonal is essentially alpha star one minus beta star zero. Okay. And why is this not possible? Because to change psi to psi orthogonal, okay, this flipping operation is essentially anti unit operation. And the way that is essentially if you apply c times minus i sigma y, where c is conjugation, and the conjugation is defined something like this c, if you apply on psi, essentially you get alpha star 0 plus beta star 1. So you see this psi and psi orthogonal, they're connected by uh, this, uh, you know, this kind of uh, anti unit operation, okay. And we know that anti unit operation you cannot implement physically. Okay. And more rigorously, uh, this is not a complete project domain. Don't worry about it. So, essential thing to uh, realize is that this kind of operation you cannot implement in, in, in your laboratory. Okay. So, that is the reason why you can never be able to design a universal NOT gate. Okay. And this is also application in quantum communication. Uh, the next result that is not possible in quantum mechanics is partial erasure, okay? So what is partial erasure? I know what is erasure. When I want to erase, I want to eliminate all the information. That is, if I have given a quantum bit like alpha zero plus beta one, I want to reset that to zero, okay? That means I lose all information alpha and beta, okay? What I mean by partial erasure? I mean the following. That is, given a quantum bit like this, I can parameterize by theta and phi on the block sphere, okay? All of you know. And theta phi are two real numbers. Okay. Similarly, given a quantum state in higher dimension, I can parameterize by 2d minus one real numbers like this. Okay. So as I said, if you want to erase, you lose all the information over theta and phi. Okay. And the final state of the qubit is independent of theta and phi. But if you want to do partial erasure, you reduce the parameter space of the dimension quantum state that holds quantum information. For example, if you are dealing with a quantum bit. If you want to erase part of the information, you erase either theta or phi. That is, given a suggested psi theta phi, you allow a transmission which will take to psi only depending on theta and not phi. Or you can also change psi theta phi to psi of phi but not of theta. Okay, that means you want to erase only part of the information but not full. Okay. Again, you can prove that this is not allowed uh, in quantum mechanics. I think you know some magic. You once you come here, start working. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> so maybe, maybe. Ah, <laughs> uh, so. So, so what this is telling you the following that uh, partial erasure of orbital quantum bit or qubit should yield an output that is completely independent of phi, but you can show in linearity that this kind of thing is not allowed. So, so what possibly trying to tell is that quantum information, whatever that entity, whatever that notion is, you can erase completely. But when you erase it, it goes and remains somewhere else. But if you want to erase part of the information, that is somehow not possible. That means quantum information in some sense is some kind of individual entity. Okay. You, you cannot you cannot tell part of the information yet get away with that. Okay. So you do either move completely or keep it as a whole. Okay. So that is the message that you get from this. Yes, thank you. <laughs> So next, I come to uh, no heading theorem, uh, which uh, Professor Das mentioned. So 
Before telling about no hiding theorem, let me tell you about uh, the bigger picture of uh, the you know question of loss of information. Okay. And this has been well studied since 1991, starting from time of Jurek and others, uh, uh, essentially under the program of decoherence. You know. So when we have a quantum system and we start interacting with the external world, we know that system undergoes decoherence and it loses its purity. Okay, that means if you start with a quantum system in the pure state and start interacting with the external world, your system will slowly tend to mixed state. Okay, that is essentially your loss of coherence. Okay. Uh, and uh, mathematically, you can describe this any open system dynamics by this simple equation that is given this input pure state and some external uh, world, which is initially in this state, we can map in this way. And uh, if you trace out this part, you will see that if pure state psi psi go to a state row, so a row is essentially this. And those who are familiar with quantum information, essentially these are your Krauss operators. And this is essentially your open system dynamics, but uh, but uh, nevertheless, don't mind about this notion. So essentially, your purity gets tested when system start interacting with the external world. And in some extreme situation, if decoherence is uh, you know very drastic, that can lead to complete loss of information. Okay, that means the final state row that uh, you know that you get at the end of your physical. Uh, dynamics is completely independent of psi okay if that happens i call that as information bleaching so whatever information was there in the initial state completely bleach out okay finally don't have anything left over okay so that is essentially the notion of loss of information and there are many physical scenarios where actually this happens yeah so, so if you have a physical mechanism which takes psi, psi this uh, initial state to some mixed state, with final state being independent of the input state, then you can ask the question, where is the missing information? Okay. And as I said, you can cite many examples, starting from state randomization to quantum teleportation to uh, thermalization to black hole evaporation and many more things. Okay. So these are all examples of this quantum, I mean, bleaching process. And also we call this in this uh, paper, we call also hiding process because original information is hidden somewhere in the world, rest of the universe, but the question is where, okay? So that is answered by the new hiding theorem, okay? So before coming to statement of the new hiding theorem, let me tell you about uh, how how do you hide classical information? Okay. In classical world, information can be hidden only in two ways: that is, moving the original system, or by encrypting the message. Okay. So what it means is the following: suppose I have some secret file in my laptop. Okay. Either I can take my laptop and keep in my home, you know, in some locker, and you know, or I can encrypt my file and nobody can read that file. Okay. So you can do this or that, but you will realize uh, after proving the no hiding theorem that that is the only one way to hide quantum information. That is, you can only move to some other place. You cannot encrypt in a bipartite correlation or two subsystems. So one classic example of hiding classical information is your uh, one-time pair that is Vernum cipher. So at least such a message string. And she also has a random embed key, K, okay? So she does this infusion, M addition modulo to K, okay? And then if you send this C and to Bob, then original message can be returned by receiver say Bob using this key, that is C addition modulo K, again, give back to the same message, okay? So if you look at this simple example, you realize, actually, so really, really, sorry, realize himself by 1949, that encoded B string contains no information of the original message. So you can ask the question, where does the information reside? This is neither in the encoded message nor in key, but in the correlation between the two strings, okay? So this is great insight. Now you can ask the question, does this analogy holds in quantum information? Okay, we want to generalize this notion to quantum domain, is it possible? 
Gancho ele de novo. So, so what we want to do is we want to hide. Okay, so, okay, so, so I continue with this classical notion. So classical, uh, I mean, hiding classical information essentially, as I said, uh, you can put in correlation between pair of systems or moving to another location. So you ask the question, can you hide same way? That is, can you hide quantum information in these two possible way? So a quantum analog would be you encode a quantum state into correlations between two subsystems with the condition that subsystems have no information. Okay. Then this no hiding theorem will tell you that if the original information is missing, then it must be uh, it must move to some other part of the universe, and it cannot be hidden in the correlation between the what theorem is actually trying to tell. Yeah. So here is a very simple way to realize, I mean, to visualize what is going on. So, so you have a quantum system initially in some state psi, and you have the universe, okay? And something happens to the system at the end, the state becomes zero, and whatever information is there is completely washed out, or completely bleached out, okay? Then the no-hiding theorem will tell you that the information which is missing from here simply goes, remains in some corner of the Rest of the universe. Okay, it cannot get destroyed. So, so in some that in some sense, no heading theorem is actually rigorously trying to prove the notion of conservation of information. Okay. Okay, those who want to uh, uh, look at the precise statement, uh, uh, the theorem looks like this. So let us have input state psi and you get mapped to some bigger state psi. Because if I trace out this psi, I will get a mixed state. And if this input gets mapped to a final state, which is independent of the input psi, that is this sigma zero is fixed for all rho. Okay, rho is this psi psi, this psi k and psi bra, and this sigma zero final state is independent of rho. Okay, then what you can show is the in the bigger Hilbert space, this psi, big psi, essentially looking something like this. Okay. So this tensor with this, tensor with that. Okay. And these are uh, I mean theorem require, requires just addition, uh, I mean additional dimension. I don't 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 worry about this part, but essentially what you're trying to tell is that the information which is missing from this part, because it's not there, it simply goes and remains in some part of the rest of the universe, because this part is the universe rest of the universe and this is your original system okay so this is this side is not there at the end of the day but it is actually found in some corner of the uh, you know uh, rest of the universe okay so to prove to, to prove this theorem you need essentially the linearity and identity but again that is uh, i'm not going to do that uh, the, the main message is that the information which is missing is wholly encoded in the remainder of the Hilbert space with no information stored in the correlation between the two subsystems. You can see this psi is not getting entangled with this or this or this with this. It's simply sitting there. From there, you can actually take out and you can go home, you know, that it actually sitting there. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, I just said I'm not telling the proof here, but essentially the, 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 the steps to prove is you realize that any physical process you can realize by unitary process in larger Hilbert space. And using linearity and unitarity, you can prove that actually the missing information remains in the rest of the universe. That means quantum information can be hidden only in one way, that is by moving to the rest of the universe. You are not able to encode in bipartite correlation, but only you take away and keep it in some part of the universe. Okay, here is one simple example, uh, so-called quantum state randomization. This is a lot of application in quantum uh, communication uh, and also uh, quantum information. So randomization is a physical process which essentially takes an arbitrary pure state like this to a completely random state I by D, okay? For example, if you have a single qubit, 
like alpha 0 plus beta 1, if you apply the Pauli matrices along with identity uh, with equal probability one fourth, you will end up with I by 2. This is your randomizing channel. Okay. Uh, uh, this part don't worry. So, so just I want to example I want to highlight this uh, process and then see how does this example uh, illustrates the no heading theorem. Okay. So, so what I want to now claim is that if you do this randomizing channel in a larger Hilbert space, you will realize that the information which was there in the original system actually remains in some ancilla qubit. Okay. So what you do, you attach a uh, two qubit as ancilla. Okay. So your system is single qubit or whole inverse two qubit. Okay. That is your closed system. Okay. So you take the input qubit, you take two qubit. Okay, this two qubit is your rest of the universe. Okay, and then you do unitary transformation, which is essentially a control unitary. Then you can map to this sigma mu psi tensor with mu. Now, what is mu? Mu are as an orthogonal vectors for two qubit, uh, you know, Hilbert space. And you take your ancilla state initially to be equal to the proportion of all the orthogonal states. And what is the unitary here? Unitary explicitly given this. This is actually your conditional unitary or control unitary. Uh, slightly generalized version of you know your C not get, and from this if you realize if you trace out this uh, this ancilla okay you you will get indeed one fourth this you know uh, this uh, some of our mu sigma mu psi and the psi sigma mu you know this this uh, channel randomizing channel. But if you recall the no heading theorem okay, what happens? You will realize that the information which is not here simply should be contained somewhere here. Is it so? Then say yes, it does. So the way to check that is the following. So start from this state, and this state you can write something like this. Okay. And what is V23? This is a local inventory acting only on this two qubit. And what is the local inventory? The local inventory essentially the C naught acting between two and three and Hadamard tensor with identity and C naught acting between two and three. So you see the information which is missing from this part indeed contains in this third qubit up to this local inventory. Okay. If you do a local inventory here, you will get with this state size. Okay. So essentially that is the message that the missing information which has gone, which has disappeared from this part is actually you can find an ancilla qubit up to this local inventory transformation. So this we did actually in experimentally we verified with uh, an MR setup uh, in uh, in collaboration with uh, Anil Kumar in IAC Bangalore in 2010, and uh, beautifully you know they then demonstrated uh, this new adding theorem. So uh, so in this experiment we try to do this randomizing channel and. This qubit loses the information, and uh, and uh, as, as I said, this channel actually transforms your state to a complete mixed state. And uh, at the end, you will find that ancilla qubit you can reconstruct from the final state of the ancilla. And moreover, nothing is hidden in the correlation between the original and ancilla qubit. So these all these statements actually uh, are tested in experiment. So here is. Uh, the central data. So initially, you have a qubit in a coherent superposition, then two ancilla qubit in state zero, zero, and then you do the randomizing channel. At the end, you see that the state is i by two here, nothing is here, and the complete information which is missing from here, it will be found in third qubit. So this is the first experimental test of the no heading theorem, which is also the first uh, experimental test of the conservation of quantum information. Okay, so last part, uh, let me come to that. That is about no masking theorem. Uh, uh, here, the goal is slightly different than no heading. So what we want to do is, uh, we want to hide, sorry, not hide. I mean, we want to encode information 
uh, in bipartite correlation or a bigger entangled state with the condition that neither this nor this will have the information. Only in the correlation you can hide. Okay. So typically, what you do? Okay. Typically, when you want to store information, you need a physical system. Okay. You take a qubit, you encode some information there. You take another qubit, encode some information here. So information is essentially encoded in the physical state of the quantum system. But now, what we are trying to think is the following: we take a single qubit. We map it to a joint state of a larger system with the requirement that this and this they don't have anything. Okay, they don't contain any information. Only it is somewhere kept in the correlation, the spooky correlation, or in, in a, or in the entanglement between this and this. Okay, is it, is it allowed or not allowed? Okay, the answer you will see is this is not possible to only store in the correlation. Okay. So essentially, the question we want to raise here: Can you store information in spooky correlation such that it is hidden from both the subsystems and only remain here? Okay. This may allow quantum information to spread over the spooky correlation and remains invisible to both the subsystems that are possessed by local observers. Okay. So, and the spreading of quantum information over the quantum correlation we call as masking because. Local observer, they don't see anything as if they put a mask, you know. So information not here, not here, but only in the correlation. Okay. And you will see that this kind of thing is also not possible. So the statement uh, uh, looks like this. So masking is again some kind of uh, physical operation, can be unitary, can be you know more general operation. But again, larger in the larger Hilbert space, again it is unit operation. So any operation you will say is masking with the condition that a set of states AK in some Hilbert space A getting mapped to a bigger state psi K in a joint Hilbert space with the condition that marginal states of psi K are identical. That is, if I trace out B side, I get row A. If I trace out A side, I get row B. But the requirement is that row A and row B they are same, uh, you know, for all the inputs. Like this, okay. Is it possible to satisfy this condition? The answer is no. Okay, so that is essentially the no masking theorem. So any arbitrary quantum state you cannot be masked. That is you cannot satisfy these conditions. So how does goal looks like? The proof goes uh, something like it is a bit uh, involved, unlike other uh, theorems. But uh, but nevertheless, you know, it gives a new a new insight to quantum information. So you can assume that. Uh, let the two orthogonal states psi zero, sorry, S zero, S one, and that gets mapped to psi zero and psi one, uh, where psi zero and psi one are shared by two parties like Ellis and Bob. And uh, then you say that, okay, if such a transformation is possible, then you take a superposition like mu S zero plus mu S one with arbitrary mu, mu and mu. Uh, if you demand this, uh, after a lot of, uh, lot of uh, you know steps, you will see that the leads to contradiction, okay? So that is the main reason why you cannot mask this uh, in bipartite correlations. And this has uh, a lot of application in uh, quantum communication, quantum bit commitment, uh, secret sharing, and many a lot of activity you know uh, going on in this direction now. So uh, sorry, there is a typo here. So so we try to prove that it is impossible to have a quantum Qubit commitment. Okay, so if you recall, uh, there is a very famous uh, result in quantum information that is uh, no bit commitment. Okay, this is proved by Low and Chow many years back. Uh, mm, essentially, the bit commitment is a protocol, very uh, very elementary protocol that does the following. So Alice commits to a bit value. Okay, and she encodes in some larger quantum state and sends one particle to Bob. And later on, her job is to convince Bob that indeed she has committed to a particular bit. But using the entangled pair, what Lo and Chow they try to prove is that at the opening phase of the protocol, they can at least can always cheat to Bob. She can always change her mind by doing some local unit operation and change the state from psi zero to psi one, and she will you know uh, can be dishonest at the later opening phase. So this is uh, that that is why unconditional quantum bit commitment is not possible okay 
what we try to show is that by using no masking theorem we try to prove that you cannot design a quantum qubit commitment okay which is more general than this and what is a bit what is a classical bit classical bit is essentially a defaced version of quantum bit okay if you do measurement if you undergo i mean if you allow the qubit to undergo decoherence you will end up with a classical bit so so the famous no bit commitment actually follows from our uh, no quantum qubit commitment okay and uh, uh, also try to argue that it, it will have application in secret sharing because in secret sharing what you do is you store a quantum information a secret in, in a multi particle quantum state with the condition that uh, none of the single user can retrieve the information but if they come together they can retrieve the information okay so it will have application there also and recently we tried to also generalize this part, uh, quantum observable uh, uh, still under progress okay so i think i have almost come to my end of my slides yeah so so quantum information is a deep concept you know i mean technologically we have made so much progress but still lot of lot of things to be understood you know so we are trying to understand only part of this quantum information elephant okay this is just a cartoon but the, you know just to convey the message so let me try to summarize what i said uh, i try to highlight some of the fundamental differences between classical and quantum information and that will tell you what is quantum about quantum information so for example we know that classical information can be copied can be deleted can be flipped and uh, many things you can do but quantum information all the things is not possible they are not possible okay not allowed and i also try to convey that no deletion and no cloning if you combine these two you can link to conservation of information so classical information is a uh, is a quant i mean is a has a notion of physicality in the sense that you need physical system to store information but it has no permanence but quantum information is physical and also it has permanence uh, and finally uh, it also try to tell you uh, Last oh, thank you, thank you. So I also try to tell you that uh, why you cannot design a not get, and also I try to tell you that why it is impossible to partially erase quantum information, which uh, is telling you that quantum information is some kind of individual entity. Okay, and in no heading theorem, I try to convey that if information is missing uh, from one subsystem, it remains in the rest of the universe. You know. and you cannot hide in the bipartite correlation uh no masking theorem tells you that quantum information can not be masked okay and all these impossible operations that uh, i will try to highlight are fundamental consequences of the two features that is linearity and unitarity okay so with that i can try to answer the question that i raised in the title of my talk so what is quantum information okay so you may have different answer but here is one answer that quantum information is something which is inexpressible in classical terms and is unclonable un unfutable indivisible unhideable and unmaskable if you discover something more you can add to this list so till then thank you so okay if you have any questions Ask. Oh. Uh, uh, that was this uh, slide where you were talking about the no masking part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, where you were talking about the subsystems uh, being uh, like, I mean, storing the information only in the correlation. Right, right, right. So, yeah, what yeah. about the Bell state, for example? The marginals are. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that that is that is essentially classical information. So you encode, you take zero and one, okay, towards one state. You map zero to one of the Bell state, say five plus, and you map one to five minus. Okay, that means if you look at the marginal, they have nothing to tell about what is zero and one. But globally, you can do it. That means you are able to mask classical information in the correlation. Okay, 
So what you are pointing out is a perfect example that tells you that classical information you can encode in this correlation. But if you want to do the same thing for a quantum state, not possible. No, uh, I mean, uh, so in, in the Bell state, uh, all the information is in the correlations, right? Because if you look yeah, at what you know, so no, the information No, no, what is the input? Input is zero and one, okay? I oh, may have, okay, 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 so the, the goal is the following. You have a quantum state, you map it to a bigger state, okay? Mm -hmm. And then ask the question, is it possible that the marginals don't don't have uh, the input only in the correlation? The answer is no. Okay. But and think. one more question I have is uh, from the no deletion part. Uh, yeah, no deletion part. So you started with two identical copies of the, yes, uh, yes, of yes. the same state, and so do they have to be two identical copies? Or, that is the goal of the deletion. I mean, erase your unit single copy. Okay, whatever is given to you, erase it. Okay. But deletion, we wanted to see does the extra copy helps in deletion okay so that is why you need two identical copies okay, okay. so if they were two different states then the no deletion doesn't happen if you were take different different copy then the second copy or first copy whatever you want to call mm -hmm. that will not play any role mm -hmm. essentially your result will reduce to okay because you want to reset only this last one okay not the not from two identical one okay, okay. All right. so you want to make a distinction between erasure and deletion so right yeah okay yeah that's all any more questions uh, I, I would have a question. Uh, so just, is it okay to ask? Yes. Is yes, someone yes. else asking? Yes, please, please go ahead. Uh, so continuing with uh, whatever Dr. Shiddas just said. So what if I input A0 plus B1 as A plus psi plus plus B psi minus, psi minus uh, where psi plus and psi minus are well states? No, you cannot do that, no. That, that, that is a health theorem. You cannot encode. A0 plus B1 in well state. So you can't do that. Okay, okay. Now, question is, you can encode A0 plus B1 in well state. You're not allowed. So that is okay. essentially the thing. Okay, so a vitary state, you cannot encode in this state because if you do this, then you will violate the no cloning. Sorry, you will violate the no masking theorem. Okay. No masking theorem. Okay, okay. Uh, and the other question that uh, I had is more general in the sense that. No masking theorem, somehow I find it more connected to uh, this idea of quantum secret sharing. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 yes, yes. So yes. Are, are there known results uh, or yeah, so, are there more work yeah, along this area? Yeah, so, so no masking essentially provides kind of, you know, background to what kind of states you can choose to do your secret sharing protocol, you know. Uh, so by the way, I should also tell that uh, uh, the no masking theorem holds only for bipartite, uh, you know. Right, right. You, right, cannot, right. you cannot store information right. in bipartite correlation. But if right. you go to multi-party, uh, people have shown that indeed you can store information in, in That's correlation. That's what I was going to get that, that there's no masking for multi-party. Yeah, so, so yeah, no, yeah, no masking is only for bipartite correlation. For larger number of parties, you can store in only the correlation, and that actually helps you to design secret sharing protocol. Correct. Okay. Actually, there are many, many, many other applications. For example, quantum error correcting codes have this multi-party kind of correlations where yeah, 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 uh, yeah. a certain number of uh, subsystems reveal yeah, no information. Yes, yes. But something more than that would reveal the information about the state. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, if you if you see our paper, there is a discussion about all this uh, secret sharing error corrections, all this in that you know, do discuss. Okay, okay. Yes. Thank, you, thank you, thank you. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, maybe I missed it to explain. So I'm asking. So in the no deletion formulation, we have two copies of shy. Mm -hmm. And then we are showing that one shy is there, the other shy is being deleted, right? So is it equivalent to formulating? We have just one copy of shy, not two copies, mm -hmm. and we want to delete that shy. That is that is just erasure, you know. You want whatever bit, whatever input is there, you want to reset. Oh, so you are reset. giving two different names. Like, so no, no, so erasure, erasure, no, erasure is a different process. Okay. Achha. So so deletion is different process. Deletion, classical deletion is already there. It was already there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this no deletion actually got inspired. I, I was inspired by looking at the classical deletion process, and I thought, okay, is it allowed in quantum mechanics? Okay. That's how I started thinking about this question. You know. So so deletion is actually different than erasure. Right? And if any physical process can be mapped to uh, a unitary in a higher 
dimension yes, yes. as you are saying. So what about decoherence or measurement? Yeah, everything, everything. So yeah, quantum yeah. measurement also can be mapped. Yes, yes, yes. So in that sense, uh, when we measure mm. and the state collapses, so that means uh, the original state remains in some part of the universe. It should. It should, it should. It should because yeah. it's unitary in higher dimension. Yes, yes, yes. It should. Because, because you cannot destroy information. You, see, you cannot destroy quantum state. You show. So that is the biggest message. So, yeah, yeah. So the proof involves unitary. Yes, but yes. the implication is even measurement or any other non unitary process cannot destroy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm asking about a very basic level question, but mm -hmm. that is. Uh, how um, if this uh, means it's practical application of the quantum information means uh, i want to like um, how do we motivate it because most of the cases your uh, decorrence and a lot of in implementation in hardware mm -hmm. but can you give some example how we can use like in classical case we are using computer in signal processing mm -hmm. these different can you give a proper uh, pathway to study like uh, how why we study quantum information more prominently i mean quantum information a lot of uh, uh, you know study from computing to communication to uh, sensing i mean everything you want to build in a quantum way right so so i mean you just i, mean, I can just you know, give a single name okay you work in this direction right so quantum information is a very big subject now for the last 30 years it has been really developed so much right so if you want to study quantum computing you have to go to quantum algorithm or maybe quantum complexity theory or maybe how to fight decoherence you know or maybe how to fight noise and so on okay if you want to go in quantum communication you have to study maybe teleportation maybe remote state preparation or maybe quantum secret sharing you, you have to choose so i cannot just tell you okay you do this right so what is, what is your question? I mean, you want the big picture or what? No, yes, in this direction, uh, let's say I'm talking about the quantum algorithm development. Mm -hmm. So when you are talking about the quantum algorithm development, you are taking some picture of the system's properties or anything, mm -hmm. uh, something like that. Then in that case, uh, you are measuring something, but you are not getting entire information of the system. Mm -hmm. Because there is a uh, because we are not there that much developed with a noisy intermediate scale. Yes, that's why. So when do you do calculation, so you are facing several, like let's say uh, talk about the entropy. Mm -hmm. So you cannot get the, you are not able to get the proper state and you are not doing able to do the partial trick. You can do it mathematically, mm -hmm. it's perfectly fine. But when you talk about the quantum computation, mm -hmm. then how do we handle this thing? We are getting developed in that case. We are getting, uh, people get easily calculate this entropy information or correlating information. Mm -hmm that uh, means if you also send it like signal processing also same case so in that direction is it, it is yeah i mean uh, so one of the biggest challenges uh, you know with this intermediate scale noisy quantum computer what kind of algorithms you can run more efficiently okay that is, the, that is one of the biggest challenge people are trying to face you know so so you have to design new algorithms or you have to modify the existing algorithms that suits to your requirement okay the small scale quantum computer how best you can do okay so that is one of the directions you can explore if you want so mm, yes because yeah. mostly people are do, working in two qubit three qubit yeah, yeah. four qubit but two qubit three qubit is not justified exactly, exactly current yeah. um, mm. scenario that's why most talk are based on the this few limits only yes, 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 yes. Yeah. max to max 20. that's why my question is that no one talking about the, the bigger picture i don't know this is the physical constant or Mm, anything else that's the question. No, bigger picture, as I said, is till we develop a full fledged quantum computer, okay, what can you do with this noisy quantum computers? That is the biggest goal, okay. Currently, most of the people are trying to, uh, you know, whether in the algorithm side or maybe complexity side or even hardware side, most of the people are trying to think what best use you can make of this existing quantum computers, okay. So, that is the bigger picture, you know? okay. okay. I was just trying to, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's related to mm -hmm. the question before. I was just uh, trying to, uh, this might be a very bad question. Mm -hmm. Is there something equivalent in the quantum world mm -hmm. of in classical, what is called Nyquist noise? 
yeah i think there are some work whether i do what would be a quantum noise mm -hmm. Yeah, there are such a thing as there are some work we try to give a bound on this quantum noise. Yes, there are some couple of ones. But but what would it be? What what would it what? I mean, classically uh -huh. we know what uh, mm -hmm. Nyquist theorem tells us. Right? So that's a classical source of noise. Mm -hmm. If you were to find my temperature, I can connect it to you know what we call Johnson noise. Mm -hmm. You can measure it in the yeah. lab. But all these. You know what quantum information is not. Mm -hmm. That's how we are mm -hmm. defining it. So I was just trying to think of what it is. So is it something that has no inherent source of uncertainty in terms of quote unquote noise? Mm -hmm. Is there such a thing as quantum noise, or is there not? Quantum, quantum noise is there, of course, is there. But uh, whether that uh, can answer the uh, question what it is, uh, that is not well studied or understood. But quantum noise will have studied, yes, definitely. But what would it be? I mean, in kind of physical or mathematical term. So essentially, what uh, what they do is, I mean, uh, when they study this kind, like I say, quantum metrology or quantum sensing, you know, they want to reduce the signal noise ratio, so they want to enhance this uh, signal using a squeeze state or maybe entangled sources. So essentially, whenever they say quantum noise, they deal with this kind of uh, quantum uncertainty. Okay? Quantum uncertainty is kind of inherent randomness that you see in the quantum world. Right? So, so that people have studied in various scenarios. But, uh, uh, but the noise that you are trying to see whether there is some analogy with, like classical this noise that uh, I'm not sure whether people have studied, but uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's yes, 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 yes. People do study about that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so you, uh, so any noisy process like uh, on uh, on larger mm -hmm. words space is finitary, as you said. Mm -hmm. uh, but then typically if you if your system of interest uh, let's say it's a mixed state it will be uh, entangled to the environment right right right, right yeah. so that's how it is mm -hmm. so when the uh, experiment was performed at uh, iisc uh, with that when when you actually had information in the system mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then you sort of deleted it but you found that it's somewhere in the mm -hmm. environment so was the environment and the system entangled with each other something? no no you see you see at the end this third qubit is not entangled with this one so we completely factor out so uh, how do we call it environment to it? Uh, no, no. Okay. Initially, you start with system and then sila, mm -hmm. then no entanglement. Mm -hmm. Once you evolve, they get entangled. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, uh, the, the entanglement is gone. Entanglement is it's gone. It's how in teleportation thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. OK, any more questions?